Glad you could take your Bibles and turn to Acts, the third chapter of Acts. We're going to pray for this box of names. And if you have a prayer request that needs to be put in your box, be sure and add that to our box. I think the prayers are trying to get out. The box is getting full. So we may have to get a bigger box. God is answering prayer. Let us pray. Then we're going to read the third chapter, the first 11 verses. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you this morning for making it possible that we all might come together here in this place. Help us, Lord, this morning to rely upon your word to build a fire within our souls that will heat us up and get us going and doing the things that you would have us to do. Lord, we pray that there will be warmth among us this morning. We pray, Lord, that your will in our lives will be accomplished that we might go forth from this service today filled with your word, filled with your spirit, that we might show others the way home to Christ. Now, Lord, we pray for those that could not be with us. We know that you know each and every need even of those that are here. We would pray your will above all might be accomplished. Now, Lord, your blessings upon each one that's here, upon your word. Lord, it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And Lord, I pray for the prayer request that's in this box. Thank you for the answers to prayers that we have received. Lord, we just pray that you'll continue to add prayers. You'll continue to keep us praying for this box of names. Amen. If you're a little chilly this morning, it might be because the furnace is out. You know, the furnace always takes a, the right time to go out, doesn't it? When it's cold, or the air conditioner will go off when it's so hot you can't stand it. I turned ours on yesterday at the house, and I was hoping that it would work. So far, it's working. <coughs> Acts, the third chapter. Beginning with verse 1. We're going to talk this morning a little bit about get up and walk. Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the 3 o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was being carried in. Each day he was put beside the temple gate the one called the Beautiful Gate, so he could beg from the people going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently, and Peter said, Look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, get up and walk. In verse 7, then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. 
he jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. Then walking, leaping, and praising God, he went into the temple with them. All the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. When they realized he was the lame beggar that had seen so often, they had seen so often at the beautiful gate, they were absolutely astounded. They all rushed out in amazement to Solomon's colonnade where the man was holding tightly to Peter and John. So read God's word. Get up and walk. Yeah. Isn't it amazing how God answers prayer? I think you all probably believe in prayer and you believe in the power of prayer and that prayer changes things. Now we've been praying for quite some time that God would change this church, that he would build it to be the church that it ought to be, filled with people worshiping him. And we've seen our ups and we've seen our downs. And a few times we've probably even wondered, is God really answering our prayers? You know, I thought many times how good it would be when I felt the call to go into the ministry to be able to see someone who was lame and couldn't walk or someone who was sick in bed and couldn't get up. To be able to go into that person and lay my hands on them and pray and they would get up and walk. We <coughs> get out of that bed and walk. But evidently God hasn't given me that gift yet. So it kind of makes you wonder, doesn't it? Is God really answering our prayers? There's a lot of prayers in this box of names here. And how do we know that God is answering prayer? Well, I want to use this scripture this morning because I think this Peter here uh, heals a crippled beggar. He's showing us something that maybe we need in our life today. So if you still got your Bibles open to that scripture, let's take another look at what happened here. Now it says that Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to pray about three o'clock. About three o'clock. Do you normally go to the temple to pray at three o'clock? It seems like the Jews had three times a day that they would pray. One was in the morning, about 9 o'clock. The other was in, in the afternoon, about 3 o'clock. And the last one was in the evening, about sunset. Well, we're in the house of the Lord today, and it's past 9 o'clock. So we probably already had our prayer time, right? This morning. Now we just have to set our clocks for the evening, about three, and then sunset this evening. We need to pray the third time. How many of you pray those three times a day? No? I don't even do that. So probably none of us, right? But it says that they were devoutly in doing this very thing. They devoted their time to set aside those three times to pray. If you do that, you must have a reason for it, right? So they must have felt that there was a need to pray, and they were in on their way into the temple at three o'clock for a prayer service. And as they approached the temple, this crippled beggar was being carried in and put at the gate that enters the temple. But he was there to collect money. He wanted money to live by. He wanted money to keep him going. And he knew that if he was taken to that particular spot and begged for money, 
somebody coming along would surely give him what he needed to get him through the week or the weeks ahead. That was a good spot. I guess it's like you want to be where the tourists are so you can get the right autographs, you know, or something like that. He was there to receive money. And the fourth verse says that when Peter and John looked at him intently, because he had just asked them for some money, Peter said, look at us, getting the man's attention. Do you think there would be more people praying today if we got their attention? Maybe if we had enough money to give them, we could get their attention, right? Peter said, look at us. We don't have any gold or silver, but we're going to give you what we do have. And then Peter said, as he looked, as the man looked at him, and as he looked at the man, Peter said, get up. And walk. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene. Peter did not have the gift of healing. He did not have a lot of money to give. But Peter knew that he had something far more valuable to give. He could give him Jesus Christ the Nazarene who would do the healing. So all he had to say was in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, get up and walk. I think there's scripture to that fact that goes along the line. Anything that you ask in Jesus' name, you will receive. Peter knew that the healing came from this Jesus. And so he told the man to get up and walk. Now verse 7 is a very important verse in the scripture because it says, Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. Took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. Would Peter have had to do that? Probably not. But what does that show us? That tells me that Peter knew this man was going to be healed. And the person that was going to do the healing was Jesus Christ the Nazarene. So that's putting a little faith in there, being confident that God is going to take care of this man begging for money who could not walk. The scripture says that as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. He jumped up. Can't you just see that? unfolding before you, man there lame and begging for money comes to encounter Jesus Christ the Nazarene and the man witnessing for him saying, get up and walk. Then lifting him up, this man was really thrilled beyond our comprehension as he jumped up stood on his feet and began to walk. Then walking, the scripture says, leaping and praising God. Praising God. Do we really believe that God's going to answer every prayer in this box? We're putting our faith in action when we pray. Every time that we pray, for all the prayers that's in here, 
we go forth and tell others God is answering our prayers, we have witnessed the answers to those prayers. And we've had several that we know about. We don't know about all of them. In fact, we don't know all the prayers that's in this box. But God does. He's just waiting for us to pray for him. As we did this morning. You know one thing I like about prayer? I believe that God answers my prayers. I believe that God answers your prayers. I believe that there's great power in prayer. And God's going to build this church. God's going to build this church. He's going to add more people to it. Just like he did when Peter stood up and preached. Those who believe God added to the church. And I like what the scripture says that this man jumped up praising God because he realized what had just happened in his life. You see, when people, be, when people come in contact with Jesus and their lives are changed, when they can get up and walk and shout and jump around, they know their prayers have been answered. There always was an ad on, on the radio about a foot doctor over in Rama. And the ad said that your, your feet should never hurt you in your lifetime. So that was her plea for you to come and see her because, or sometimes my feet really hurt. <laughs> we need to believe God answers prayer. And through prayer, God changes things. Changes things in our life. And then we ought to get up and praise God for what He has done. <clears throat> I once asked someone, several preachers, I said, How come it how come today that we can't find people witnessing for the Lord? Giving their testimony of what Jesus has done in my life. I look back at the years that I have spent and I see a number of times where God has intervened, where God has dealt with me in my walk in this life. And I want to say I thank you, Lord, this morning for what you have done. I believe in prayer. I don't think we can pray enough. I don't think this box, the prayer box, is enough. I don't think our secret prayer vows is enough. How many of you are still praying for your secret prayer vow? Are you praying every day? If the Jews could pray three times a day, and they were way, way back there, I doubt very seriously whether all of those Jews are still praying three times a day. Just like us. You know, we've gotten to the point where we don't even have the uh, midweek prayer service anymore, much. I think that's one of the backbones of this church, is our Wednesday night prayer service. That's in the middle of the week. They call it hump day, you know. Got to get over it. What? And we need that time to commune with the Lord. We're going to have a good old prayer of time for our country coming up at the Pinot Baptist Church and the noses on the bulletin board. And I've got to watch that board, board too because I missed something. And I even brought the announcement of uh, uh, senior night or senior dinner, whatever it was at church. So maybe you did too. But if you did, we got to pay attention to that board back then because that announcement's on there. The announcement for the prayer thing at Pinnock Baptist Church. That's just down the highway. 
kind of halfway between here and land. Right by Mount Sterling. Can't miss the church, it's up on the hill. Then our executive board meeting is coming up in November. It's just down the road the other way, not too far away. So if you haven't been to an executive board meeting, one of the things you want to notice if you go to that meeting is they have in the back, like maybe it was a nursery at one time, they have what they call a prayer room. Prayer room. They have a couple easy chairs in there. You can look out and even watch the, uh, the uh, preacher preach the sermon on Sunday morning if you want to go to the prayer room and pray. You can go in there and pray before the church service starts. You can go in there and pray after the service is over. You can go in there and pray any time during the week. So that makes it a church that has a prayer room where people can go three times a day and pray. And there's always something to pray about. God has made it so that there is always something to pray about or to pray for or someone. That someone might be your neighbor. That someone might be the person you work with. That's one thing I like about our secret prayer pals is here we have everyone in the church praying for one another. You can't institute the power in prayer any greater than that, I don't think. And if you're not praying for your secret prayer pal at least one time during the week, You're missing out on something. You ought to be able to feel, today I have a need and I know somebody's praying for that need. And that ought to give you power. That ought to change your life. And that's what this is all about. The Bible says, Peter said to this lame beggar, get up and walk. We need to get up and walk. We need to get up and praise the Lord for what he's doing, what he's going to do here in this church. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, know our hearts, know our thoughts. Lift us up and help us walk. Help us go out into this world this week. And whoever we come in contact with, give our witness, our testimony, that you above all might be glorified. Thank you, Lord, for this message this morning. I pray that it has really reached deep within our souls that we can begin to start jumping around praising you for what you have done in our lives and in the lives of those around us as we come to believe more fully in prayer, as we come to pray more, as we come to jump and shout that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the one who helps us every day to do your will. You will be done in Jesus' name we pray.